This is lecture one, part one, covering chapter one, the human body and orientation. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the first section of the chapter, dealing with the form and function of anatomy and physiology. So this course, Anatomy and Physiology, part one, uh, is going to be examining the human body. And there are two ways to study the human body traditionally. There is anatomy, which is the study of the structures of body parts and how they relate to one another. So essentially learning the names of the different structures, being able to recognize them and understanding how they're put together uh, physically. The other part of this course is physiology, which is studying the function of those body parts and how they work together to carry out and sustain all of the um, activities necessary for life. So in this course, we're going to be looking at both anatomy and physiology of the human being. So these topics can be subdivided into uh, more specific areas of study. So in anatomy, we can look at the gross anatomy of an organism or the macroscopic anatomy. This is the study of larger structures that can be seen unaided with the naked eye. Um, within gross anatomy, there is regional anatomy that, that examines structures within a particular area of the body. So you could study the uh, the abdominal region or the cranial region and all of the, the associated structures and organs within those parts of the body. Uh, you can also look at anatomy from a systemic uh, vantage point. So systemic anatomy or system anatomy is going to look at a single system in the body. Uh, and there are many systems that we'll be discussing some of which include the cardiovascular system, the nervous system, the muscular system. Uh, these are not isolated to a particular region of the body. They're spread throughout the body, um, but work with other systems in, in those various regions. So for instance, the cardiovascular system spans the entire body, but it doesn't make up the entire structure of the body. It's just a piece of it. It's one system. And then there's surface anatomy, which looks at uh, the surface of the body. Uh, it's a way to examine the internal structures as they relate to the overlying skin or the integumentary system. So you're able to see some of the structures of, of various systems by looking at the um, projections or shapes that they make in the overlying skin. So you can trace muscles by seeing where they lie just under the skin. You can often see uh, the vascular system in many parts of the, or the superficial vas parts of the vascular system in many parts of the body uh, sitting just under the skin. Uh, and you can also detect other organs and certainly um, uh, if there are imbalances or disorders with certain underlying organs, they can produce unusual shapes and structures that may be seen on the surface of the body. So that would be surface anatomy. Getting into a smaller scale, we also have microscop mi sorry, microscopic anatomy. Uh, and this is going to require microscopy or using a microscope to view structures that are smaller than our eyes are able to visualize. Uh, and this includes cytology, which studies the structure and function of cells, or I'm sorry, anatomy, the structure of cells. Uh, and if you ever see this term cyto, that is usually going to tell you that the subject is related to a cell. So cyto is a term that refers to cellular structures uh, or stru cellular functions. And then slightly uh, larger scale, we have histology, which is the study of tissues. Um, and this is going to be the main focus on chapter uh, four. But just to, to kind of give you a preview of that, um, tissues are collections of many cells that function together to or work together to carry out a specific function either in the 
whole body or in a particular organ. And so the study of tissues is referred to as histology. Uh, and so if you see that term histo in a word, that's usually going to be referring to tissues. So histology, um, uh, uh, hist that's the only one I can think of at the moment. Histology and I had one, uh, but that's the, the main study of tissues. Additionally, there is developmental anatomy, which we're not going to be focusing on much in this course, but um, developmental anatomy studies how the uh, structures of the body change over the course of development. So embryology, for instance, studies the development of organs and tissues and other structures uh, as an embryo is developing. So the development of the human body prior to birth. Uh, and then you could also have developmental anatomy after uh, birth, where you're studying the development from a child to the adult form. So in order to study anatomy, you have to know the terms that are used, the terms that refer to uh, different parts of the body. And you have to be able to observe visually, uh, manipulate physically, uh, palpate, which means to feel, usually with the, the tips of the fingers and osculate or hear the functions of anatomical structures. So we use many of our senses in the study of anatomy. Uh, and again, I just want to point out that anatomical terminology is going to be a big part of this course. Um, and we're going to be getting into some anatomical terminology later on in this chapter. Now, physiology also is subdivided into many different topics. Um, organ system physiology looks at how a, a single system of organs, a collection of organs in the body, work together to carry out a particular function. Um, so, for instance, the cardiovascular physiology looks at the function of the heart, the blood, and all of the blood vessels in the body in order to carry out the function of transporting nutrients, wastes, and fluids from one part of the body to another. Um, physiology, more than, than gross anatomy, tends to look at cellular and molecular functions. Uh, and so we are going to be looking at some of the, the smaller scale cellular activities when we get into topics focusing on physiology. Um, and uh, it's going to examine how the body uh, is able to um, use chemical reactions within cells to carry out uh, the functions of life at the small scale, at the microscopic scale, and then how those reactions and interactions between cells scale up to sustain life at the organismal level. So in order to study physiology, you're going to need to understand some basic physical prin principles like electrical currents, the way pressure uh, functions, the movement of molecules and particles. And we're going to be going over a lot of that in the coming chapters as well, along with the basic uh, principles of chemistry and then some more advanced understanding of organic and biochemistry. Ultimately, our bodies are not set. We don't have separate anatomy and physiology. Those things are combined in a functioning living human being. While we may study them separately, the form, the, the physical structure, which is associated with anatomy and the function, which is associated with physiology, are tied and linked together. So anatomy and physiology, while we refer to them as separate, top, separate topics, they're inextricable. They are uh, one and the same. So form in, in biological systems follows function, meaning that structures of biological systems, whether you're talking about an entire organism or a cell or anything in between, the, the structure of the system is 
going to give it its function. Uh, and we'll see this at the molecular level, at the cellular level, all the way up to the organ level and organism level. So function is always going to reflect the structure. Um, and what structures are able to do depends on the particular form. And, and teeth, as this diagram shows, are a great example. We have different kinds of teeth in our mouths. They all have the general, uh, the same general structure. They have a, uh, a core pulp surrounded by a hard uh, dentin structure that is capped on the crowns with an even harder substance called enamel. But the shapes of the teeth give them different functions. The incisors located in the anterior of the mouth are chisel or blade shaped and they are great at cutting or slicing objects into smaller pieces. The teeth to the posterior of our mouth have broad surfaces that come into contact with the between the upper and lower jaws and these produce uh, uh, grinding sites where small pieces of food can be compressed and ground between the two sets of teeth, breaking them down into even smaller particles. So the molars, which are the posterior teeth for grinding, are not very great at cutting food, whereas the incisors are not very good at grinding food. But together, we have the, the incisors that can cut large pieces of food into smaller pieces and then we have the molars that think can then grind that cut material into a fine paste um, that makes digestion easier. So again the, the teeth their form follows their function. Incisors are for breaking large food into smaller pieces so they have a blade like cutting edge. Molars are for taking those smaller pieces and uh, grinding them down into a paste so they have a broader grinding surface. And we're going to see this repeated over and over again throughout the course uh, where the form of a structure, whether it's a cellular structure or an organ, uh, is going to allow that structure to do the job that it needs to do to carry out its physiological role in the body.